I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today is April 16th, 2022. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you a stamp system I created in Fusion 360 and OpenSCAD. Okay, so before I go over all of this, the evolution of it and what I'm doing, uh, a couple of things. I'm, the, the main purpose of this is I want to kind of put a stamp system together so anyone could take any SVG they wanted to and kind of add it to it really quickly with OpenSCAD and make stamps really quickly. And I think it's a great idea. And I think now that I've done it enough, these stamps print out quickly enough, they're cheap enough, they're roughly about a quarter a piece to print. Um, and you can get you know, several done in an hour or so. I think it might be a great thing to teach kids to have them make their own SVGs or files and print them out. That way you can get something rather quickly and easily. I think it's a great thing for classrooms and things like that, or for us homeschoolers. Okay, so with that, we'll go over a few things. So, the evolution. So, a few of these I've already put out there on printables. And at first, one thing I did try, this cross and this little emoji are printed like this. So they're printed down. And that gives you a little really nice flat surface, although no matter how flat the surface is, you still need to use some sandpaper. And I guess I should say this, those who are um, stamp nerds, I'm sure there's somebody out there who's a stamp nerd, these are not probably the best stamps. They're printed in PLA, uh, which is convenient, but it's kind of hard, but they make I think pretty good stamps. They work well enough for what I need to do so you can make custom stamps. So this was printed like that and so was this and they worked out pretty well. They're one piece and that's nice but then how do you do your own custom ones? It gets a little complicated. So uh, those kind of went by the wayside. And The next thing I had an idea was to print them face up. This one might be hard to see since it's black but to print it face up with a hole in the back you can see that very well. And that way you put your SVG on the top and you would just, you know, you put this SVG there and extend it and there you go, do a linear extrude. And then you print this guy out like this. That's your little handle. And I did a couple different ones. One where it was squared off and one with a little bevel because the idea is I wanted to make it easy to snap in. But then once it was in there, I wanted to stay. And that kind of worked. But it was a little difficult, you know, to push in, and sometimes it didn't stay, and I'm like, well, you could glue it, but, you know. So that was something. That was another idea. Let's see. Oh, here's, here's the square one. And so that worked. Oh, it worked well enough, but not well enough, right? So we went on, and I tried to do another whole system by itself together, but then, you know, if you get small... Here's an example where you're going to have issues if you try to do it upside down. Some of the stuff was so small, it didn't work really well upside down, but it works really well the other way. And so I finally came to the idea to use threads, which is one of the reasons why I use Fusion 360 to design part of this. So I went through a couple iterations on threads to make it uh, easy to thread in, and also to work on this a little bit. And one thing, here's an example where I, between these two, I learned something that uh, was not fun, is since these are rounded, it became rather hard to get it on right because you had to really grip it and it was kind of a pain and you know that's not that's not good and in this one let's see yeah same thing just uh, trying to do those circles not so easy to hold on to and then finally we come to this and well and actually I've, this is almost done I've got this is where I've changed a little bit so I'm keeping this top, so we have this octog uh, hexagon shape, so it's easy to hold on to, or if you have to use a crescent wrench. And I fiddle with the threads enough, so that's pretty easy to put in there, and also pretty easy to hold. Now I have switched this hexagon, where, some, where now I'm using more of a, of a rounded square, or a rectangle, and that works, it works pretty good. So that way you, you can print this. You, you just print this as is, and then you have something like this, but then you put your SVG file on top and extend it, and that works pretty well. And then one other thing I did, just to show you as an idea that I tried, which I might come back to someday, because I was trying to get a good print. I, I realized the best way to get a good print is to get it flat and then to sand it. But one idea before I came there, I was like, what happens if you round it? A lot of people would do, you know, in the old days, they'd have prints that were slightly rounded and they'd roll it. So what I did is I took that corgi, linearly extruded them upwards, and then cut them in a half circle. Which actually means it's going to be a little odd shaped, it'll be a little longer than it needs to be because of the geometry. 
and then I just rolled it. And that did not work that well, because he needs, still needs to be sanded. So you could probably do something like this, rounded and sanded, maybe. That might be an interesting idea someday down the line. But right now, for, what I, for the simplicity, it doesn't work. Now, what I have out there now, and in this example, we'll go through it. We have, the example has five different prints, different SVG files included. Oh, and one thing I also forgot to add. What I've done with this, with, with this model and the one I'm putting out there right now, is it is, um, what's the word, public domain. So I'm setting a public domain license. That means anyone can use it for any reason. So if you want to make stamps and sell them, you want to give them to your friends, you want to do whatever you want to do, it's public domain. Go crazy. And so now, and we'll go over in detail, you'll print these out like this. And then whatever SVG file you, you have, you can adjust the rectangle. So you can see this rectangle is bigger than this one. So you can adjust it for the size. And you can, you can make a big one, you can make a small one. And then once they're printed, you flip it that over. And oh, another thing, you may need a deburr. If, you don't have, if you're 3D printing and don't have a deburr, you need one. Uh, because more often than not, it will thread in just fine. But if there's a little bit of a lip there, this will take that lip off. And that way you can really thread it in there really easily. Okay, so they are, there they are. But now let's, let's just show how they work, just these five before we actually go into the code. And these I've already sanded down. So there's a triceratops. There's a corgi. Get that ink on there, good. There's a Jesus fish. I've got a heart. And then I have a pterodactyl. Boom. So those five are in there. But the idea is you can take these, fiddle with the code, and make your own. So here's a couple other ones that I have. That one of these is actually up. I probably need to do it. I'm not using the new code, this was still doing the hex, but this is um, the Open Hardware Prusa Tattoo. Same idea. Boom. And here's an interesting, more complex one. It's a crucifixion scene. And I, of Jesus, and I had to uh, adjust it. Otherwise, the lines are gonna be too thin at this size. Boom. Ah, I need to get more ink on there. And you can see this is not the best stamp. You gotta get the ink on there good. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so there's that. So let's go show you how to use the code. Okay, first a few URLs. So here is where I posted everything out on Printables. And the link will, the link will be in the show notes. And you can go find it there, or you can just go directly on Printables. Uh, also, I men mentioned that deburring tool. It's a useful tool if you don't have one. I'll have a link to Amazon, it's an affiliate link. So I make my two cents if you use it. Uh, but here it is, I think it's a good tool. If you don't have one, and you're 3D printing, you should, you should get one, definitely. Okay, so let's get into this fun stuff. So, first of all, in few, the idea here is I wanted to, I need to do mixed media. Um, I like Fusion 360, I like OpenSCAD, and they're both really good at their own different things. Um, and you know, depending on your mentality, one could be, you might prefer one over another, or you may not really be able to do one over another. I like both, you know, I grew up, I'm, I'm an engineer, I've done a lot of CAD work in the, in the past, so I like um, Fusion 360 for a lot of things. And I also, I'm a programmer, and I think a little geometrically, so I like OpenSCAD. Now in this case, I like OpenSCAD so that I can import SVGs, and, I, and other people can import SVGs and kind of replicate and reuse the code really easily just by tweaking one line of code. But I also like Fusion 360 in this case because I want to do threads. And doing threads in uh, Open SCAD is possible, and I think there might be some libraries out there too, but it's a pain in the butt. So the idea was I would make some stuff in here in Fusion 360 and then import it and use it in Open SCAD. So here's the part that really is the key that I'm going to use, is I just made this hexagon thing, which I guess I probably didn't need to make it a hexagon, I could have made it a circle, but you know, I made it a hexagon. And then what I did here at the bottom is there's the thread. So there's the thread that we're gonna incorporate. So we're gonna basically engulf, we're gonna bring back this model in OpenSCAD and engulf it. And also while I was in here, I also made the handle. 
uh, because I need, needed the thread on that too. So here is the handle, which, you know, again, I could have done, you could have done everything in OpenSCAD except for, well, you could in theory do the thread, but it's just a pain in the butt. So I'd rather do the thread here and do that. So both the pieces were made in Fusion 360, and then I just simply saved them as an STL file, and then we brought them into Fusion 360, which I probably, I may do a, a video on all the how-tos on that, but this video is just how to use this. So if you want to make your own custom ink tabs, custom ink stamps. Okay, with that, let's get into uh, let's get into the open open SCAD. So if you get all the files, here are all the files you would download. You got a couple of um, G code files, then you have all the SVGs. I, I threw a five in there just to have have them to start with, and then you can get your own. So there's the corgi, the heart, the Jesus fish, the pterodactyl, and of course there's the code. And then here is that nub the little nub that we made. And also here's the handle. The handle is just the handle, nothing to do with, need to do with it, but the nub will get brought in. So if we go over here, and I'll kind of go down the code. So first we'll just kind of we'll remove everything here, except for the nub. Boom. Oh, remove that. So there's the nub we're talking about. So we can actually just import that. And again, let me see. Well, let me go show that part of the code just so you can see it. So I'm importing the nub, and I have right here, there's the import. So I'm just importing that, centering, that's all I'm doing. So I could, you know, if I'm going to use this, that's all i got to do. You know, in fact, if I just take this as is and do a render, we'll see, it renders just fine, life is good. Um, but we want to uh, put our stamp on it, and also that nub, that's why I called it a nub, is it might not be big enough. So in this case, what we're doing is we're kind of, on the bottom, we're surrounding that nub. So let me, actually, let me comment that out. Let me comment out the nub and comment out the stamp real quickly, just so we can focus on this part. So this part is kind of key. And also what you see here is we actually remove that center. So we, we kind of, let's see, we can adjust it here. So we go down here, and I have the different sections. There's a corgi section, a heart section, a fish section, just to make it life easy so you can tweak things. But I can come down here, and here's this wrapper rectangle. And so I can make this a little bigger. and then 37, I could make it 57, and it'll make it wider. I could make it, you know, rather than 20, make it 40, and it'll make it taller. So you can adjust it based on your needs. Let me put that back to what it was. And then also, you can round the corners a little more. I have it a five, you could make it more round like a 15. But that circle is all gonna be removed from the center. Now let's go add that nub back in. And so you can see that remo they kind of overlap each other so they kind of, you know, they can be merged into one piece, so that works. And then we have the stamp, which is on the top. Boom, just an, S just an SVG file. So what we do is, you whatever SVG file you wanna bring in, all you're gonna do is you know, you put it in the same directory, and you put the SVG, SV, SVG file name here, and then you have some adjustments because you might need to move it to move it to the left, move it up, move it down to get it in the right position, and also you might want to resize it. Uh, let me change that to a two because maybe maybe you want a bigger one, maybe you want a smaller one. So in, in this case, if I wanted to make the corgi bigger, I could just make it bigger and then make this bigger. So I'll be lazy and just do some math. So if I did two times two, and I multiply that by two just to do some lazy math, boom, now I got twice as big corgi. And everything lines up, so hooray. So whatever you want to bring in, that's how you adjust it. Uh, and then you also have the stamp height, which you probably don't need to adjust that as 2.5. It seems to work for me, but if you needed that to be taller, well, don't make it this big, but you could make it taller. Boom. Okay, so there's that. So there's the SVG, there's the adjustment, there's the scaling, there's the radius, there's making the rectangle different sizes, and there you go. And then once you get what you want, you just render it and you're good to go. But I did put these other examples in here, so you can come in here, take this whole section and say edit, comment that out, take this whole section, edit, uncomment, sorry, uncomment, or you can use Control D and Control Shift D as Oslo had pointed out the other day. And so now we have the heart version, boom, which is smaller. It's a smaller version. And so you can, you know, here's just some different examples. 
and come down here and do control D to comment that out and control shift D to uncomment this one out and there's the Jesus fish one control D comment that out and control shift D uncomment that out boom there's a pterodactyl and then let's see the last one I did let's see control D and control shift D the last one I did was ah the triceratops um, so there's you go there there you go. So you can go grab any SVG file out there. In fact, uh, you can go look at some of the other prints I put out there, like I have other dinosaur SVG files. You can go grab one of the T-Rexes or something that I, that I have out there and just put it in here and adjust this stamp the size you want, and you should be good to go. So I kind of put this out here so people can use this stamp system, and I think it's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. If anyone has any critiques or any ideas how to improve it, maybe we could do a, a, an updated version. Or you can take what I've done, since it's all... It's all um, oh, public domain. You can take it and tweak it how you want. Uh, maybe there's some better ideas out there than what I did. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. So there's the stamps. Uh, so take it, use it. Uh, if anybody makes any cool stamps, uh, be sure to post it because I'd like to see them. Control Shift D. Let's get it back to the Corgi. Corgi. Boom. Oh, oh. One other thing. <laughs> if you're doing prints, uh, you want to reverse the print because you know the stamp is backwards so when you're stamping down you want it backwards which this already does take care of that so put the SVG as as you want to view it on your piece of paper because we do we'd write down here we have this reverse reverse SVG is set to true I have a thing in there that reverses it but if for some reason you actually want to not reverse it maybe your SVG maybe your SVG was reversed change that to false and it will flip it. So glad I remembered to show that. Boom. Um, as an example, if you have text, you could do this with text. I don't have a text example here right now, but if you did text, you have to reverse the text. Otherwise, it's going to look all backwards. Okay, cool. So with that, let's wrap this up with a reminder. 3D printing is an engineering adventure that you're on. You can develop your skills and knowledge and take this in so many ways. You can make a business out of this, making stamps maybe. You can teach others, and you can make amazing designs. So design it, engineer it. I'm tired and it's late where I am, but I got big plans. I got big plans for this custom carabiner I'm working on. Videos will be forthcoming on it soon. Then who knows, an entire world of custom carabiners with dinosaur crossing stamps on them and built-in stamps. There's nothing stopping me now except for my need for sleep.